my paintings are based on photographs. They have to be based in reality. I can't, I don't just randomly paint. They all come from photographs. I collect photographs. I've been collecting photographs, now digital photographs, but from the past, magazine cuttings, newspaper cuttings, things from books, things that I pick up. It's not almost like a conscious choice. It's an image will provoke something in me that will make me want to paint that, whether it's, um, whether it's kind of conceptual or whether it's physical, there's a, a physical structure to the photograph that I know I can paint in a certain way to convey something else. And sometimes they can be quite disparate and don't necessarily make sense. And they don't necessarily make sense to me um, until they've been painted. All the new works in the exhibition were made during lockdown and the pandemic created a limbo, like a, a state of limbo that we've all globally lived in for almost two years. Um, and the title was supposed to reflect the feeling of not recognising the present. Um, but I think actually in the last few weeks, it raises far more questions about the future and what, how recognisable will the future be? What is what is the future? We haven't really, all of us on mass, haven't had time to recover from, from lockdown and to understand really what's happened. And then we're straight into something that's totally unperceivable. Um, the title, strangely, is more kind of poignant now than it was when I, um, when I titled the painting and the, and the exhibition. Uh, I think the large free brush marks are contained by areas of masked um, mask surface, so it creates a tight detail. But when I'm actually painting, I'm, I'm painting from my shoulder, that it's large physical movements. Um, it's not like painting from the wrist. So the, the way I paint on flat with these large fluid movements create an abstract mark, but it's still very controlled. There is something desirable about the surface or the colours, but then there's also a repulsion and it, it isn't always as it seems when you first look at the works. And I think that low level perceived fear, whether it's real or not, um, creates that anxiety, whether, you know, whether that fear is real. And at the moment, that fear is very real for everyone in lots of different ways. Because um, I just want people to, to get close to the surface of the work and just look you know sense the paintings there's no right or wrong way to look at them just sense them get close move away um they change the type the titles of the paintings are are chosen after the works are finished um i can never title a painting before it's finished um sometimes they have working titles that are much more descriptive uh but i'm not particularly a huge fan of descriptive titles um, that tell you exactly what you're looking at. I like a title to give another way into the work. So the titles don't necessarily obviously correlate with what you're looking at. And like photographs, I have lists and lists and lists of titles, like thousands of them um, that I hear on the radio or I see if I'm driving or things pop up in conversation. So I'm always collecting these little phrases and, and titles to be used. and. When the painting's finished and stood up, because where I work flat, I'm not actually looking properly at the finished piece until it's until I, I stand it upright. And then I generally know what I'm going to call it straight away. As a she town is what they call um Dundee. That was that was the that was the name of the town because it was this weird thing that the women went to work in the mills and, and the men stayed at home and looked after the children. So it was kind of a, a weird flip in that in that time. Um, so that's where the title came from. And the source image for that photograph is um, uh, a woman who was caught in uh, the September 11th fallout. And I obsessively collected imagery, you know, in, in, in magazines and newspapers from that time. And um, I think it really was like that moment that the world, for me, the moment uh, the world changed and the moment uh, that concept of fear was, was realized, became, became real. Uh, 
the still life uh, genre is not seen it's seen as female it's seen as slightly lower down the hierarchy of painting genres um i wanted to take something domestic and paint it very large to so to give to give it some power in, in some ways and and to change the relationship of the viewer to the still life the monet works for me really um changed the way i felt about flower painting and allowed me to, I've always wanted to paint flowers and I just couldn't almost allow myself to paint flowers. And it was when I was reading about his last flower paintings that while, while he was dying, people brought flowers to him and he painted them. It kind of triggered in me because I'd been very ill and I'd been in bed for a long time after having uh, an operation. And um, people have bought me flowers and I've been photographing them as they died through the whole, but I had, I didn't know what to do with these photographs. You know, I didn't know how to use them. And it was when reading about how he made his flower paintings, it, it almost was the green light that allowed me to make mine. Because when I paint, I paint in a very linear way. So each painting informs the next painting. And like I say, with consciously contemplate, if I hadn't made that painting, I wouldn't have been able to make old blush or, you know, I couldn't make the next work. And I think with the flower paintings, I'm just pushing for that ultimate piece that does what I want it to do, that to convey this, this fear, this vulnerability and sort of decay. And some of them do to a certain extent, but I'm still not quite there. So it's a, it's a massive work in progress of flower paintings. They're, they're constantly running alongside all the other types of painting. Thank you.